Hey guys, Scott Rogan here, Home Cinema Architect, uh, checking in for Rogue Home Cinema. Been absolutely flat out, but I just had to check in tonight because I had a, a client who got some planning done from us and then got some planning done by their cable install automation team and is confused by some speaker layouts. I'm really glad that he reached out because speaker placement is absolutely critical. If you get this wrong, it doesn't matter how fancy your processor, your amps and your speakers are, you know, the installation in the room is gonna, you know, rip it apart or you know make it work so here we've got a dolby atmos layout from the plan from others and we've got our first of all our surround speakers in the wrong spot they should be uh behind the seats 90 degrees or further back it's meant to be a dolby atmos chat but i've just noticed the surrounds in the wrong spot as well which is interesting anyway um dolby atmos so we these atmos speakers are clearly meant to be the backs and they're in front of the seat so that's a bit weird even I think someone that hasn't really studied the course would know that Atmos back speakers would you know go behind the seat so it's a little bit odd I think it's just convenient for the installer or the cable guys to put them there and has completely disregarded the actual plan so let's look at the plans um, this is the Dolby home cinema reference guide on where to put the speakers and here's our Atmos speakers clearly in front and behind for a total of four Dolby Atmos speakers. It's two at the front, two at the back, and this is a 7.1.4. So we've got our front three, our two sides, and our two backs. So hopefully you're with me with that one. So let's focus on Dolby Atmos. Let's see how it looks on the side. Well, here we've got speakers around 55 degrees in front to 125 degrees behind. That's based on zero degrees being directly in front and directly above the seats is 90. So you've got us there. So we can go further back or we can go, you know, maybe a little bit more narrow, but these are the targets. Now look, in the real world, things get in the way. Doors, windows, air cons, door, you know, or walls, all these things get in the way. So it's how well you compromise as to how good a job you get. Now let's have a look back at our um, effort by others here. So the uh, clearly these Atmos speakers in the wrong spot and so are the surrounds, but I'll just talk about the Atmos for today. So uh, let's have a look at the design planning that I came up with a little while ago. So this is, we use SketchUp 3D for all our design engineering. It you know nails absolutely every dimension and factor down to the millimeter. So all the brainstorming, engineering, ideas, good and bad happen in this space before we create a final plan. So here we've got our ideal seating position, which is about, I don't know, it's at about a meter off the back wall. Actually, let's check that out. How far back are we? Uh, that's not the right measurement. Um, yeah, okay, about, about 1,100 off the back wall. Um, pretty typical for this room size. Uh, about a meter above floor level. Again, directly in front is zero degrees. Directly above is 90 degrees. And we've managed to put our front Atmos speaker here at around the 60 degree, degree point. So a little bit wider than 55, which is cool. Uh, we like putting them there. And it is up in the ceiling area rather than the bulkhead area. It's just the way this happened to fall in place. So the bulkhead's a bit of a pain. When it comes to the back bolt head, we're quite happy to utilize this space and get this speaker right, right back. Why? Well, obviously, we're aiming for this sort of pink area here to put our Atmos speakers. Now, this, despite being right at the back, really as far back as we can go, is actually slightly outside of Atmos range. But what we've also factored in here is the reflection point off this back wall. So if we look at this full reflection point it's going to put us around 125 degree reflection but we're going to get a mix of these two which should fall us lo and behold pretty well on target with where this atmos speaker needs to be for this main and single row of seats everything is looking really good in fact let's have a look at the seats in here i can pull that up in a minute cool so that there's our seating for our extra reference so this is working pretty good. Now again, you know, there's some compromises, but this this works really, really well given given what this room's all about. And we see our surround speakers here at kind of um well the thing is these recliners do recline back. So even when these seats do recline back, those speakers are still actually a little bit behind 90 degrees and they are indeed towed in or um pitched in towards 
the seats. Let's have a look at this from above. So um, there's kind of a bookshelf speaker, a little bit kind of chunky, but that's what the client already has. But that so the sounds projecting out the front here. So they're towed in towards that listener. You can see that the atmos are a little bit kind of offset and because of the way the bulkhead is and, and I left if we're gonna have a screen this big, which is awesome, um, it pushes these tower speakers out rather wide. Which isn't ideal, but you know, when you got big chunky bookshelves and tower speakers, that's just what you gotta do, right? We always prefer more of a low profile or behind the screen type of installation. But but really, I mean that you can see the calculator we've used here. You know, this this design works really, really well. Like I'm I'm happy with that. It follows all the rules. Um, this thing surrounds in the wrong spot, backs likely a bit too wide, really, from what I can see. Atmos back speakers, not even behind the seats. Um, yeah, a bit of a disaster. So I, I'm just sharing that today because you know it has popped up in front of me. You know, it, it bugs me, right? Um, these cable and automation guys are, are having a crack at cinema, but it's obvious that they're just not taking it very seriously. So um, guys, look, these white papers for Dolby Atmos, um, it's not rocket science. This stuff is available on Dolby's website. So you can certainly DIY yourself to success. Um, or of course, choose, I would choose like a THX, HAA sort of certified um, team. You know, that's the training that I've had in the past. And I know when I connect to my peers around the world and around Australia, um, these guys are really passionate. They're trained, they know what they're doing. So choose a, a, a team that actually do care passionately about home cinema because then they'll follow the engineering that will lead to your success. That's really the key here. Or of course, do your homework and make sure that um, everything is following the rule book. So guys, I hope that's helped you out. Um, really going hard tonight on the need for speakers in the right spot. Because, uh, let me see, I'm just gonna come back to this. Um, if we go back to the side profile here. Now, the fact these speakers are in different acoustic environments, the amplifier and processor can add time delay, it can add some EQ, it can it can fix up the fact that these speakers are not both in the same perfect acoustic environment and that almost never is the case. It's it's reality, right? What the electronics cannot do is magically make that speaker sound like it's in the right spot if it's indeed out here. So Speakers placement is critical. Electronic processing and EQ can fix other things up. It cannot fix up speaker location, guys. So I think I've hammered that in well enough for tonight. Hope that's really helped you guys out a whole lot. And um, yeah, enjoy and may the force be with you. Bye.